hello guys welcome to my channel uh, if you're new here please make sure you subscribe share comment like and if you're already part of my family thank you so much for always being here so today we are on lesson two of transcription so if you have not yet watched uh, lesson one you make sure you watch lesson one before you come to lesson two so today I want us to start by looking at the types of transcripts uh, number one you are going to meet something called edited transcription so an edited transcription is a form of transcribing that focuses on delivering quality documents yeah and uh, it involves omission of some sentences uh, or grammatically incorrect sentences unnecessary sentences these are the things that you omit and then regardless of the words or sentences omitted the essence of the whole idea of the text still remains yes you just omit omit some of as i've told you the excessive phrases grammatically incorrect uh sentences and then the practice of edited transcription is best used for content that business owners wish to have translated in a particular foreign language or published as a book or printed material so the readability of the document is prioritized when you're doing uh, edited transcription so you should make it as appealing as possible and relevant as possible to whoever the brand wishes to target with the document being transcribed okay so number two i want us to look at intelligent transcription so here the accuracy is is a crucial factor yeah and uh, com when we compare it to the edited transcription intelligent transcription focuses on light editing of the audios or the or the video files that you are transcribing so by light editing what do we mean so some of the fillers are expressed by the speaker such as uh -huh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh you omit them yeah and then along with the pauses in between discussions repetitions or expressions that you meet when you're listening to the audios that those are some of the things that you you omit also if you meet irrele irrelevant details like starters summer slangs non-standard languages you know you also omit them so you can at least try to compare intelligent transcription with clean verbatim as we are coming to look at clean verbatim as we progress with the video okay so the main point is to eliminate phrases that are irrelevant to the conversation and discussion main subject okay so the crucial factor is the ability to determine the gist of the message and preserve it in the transcribed document, even after the emotional components of the original files are excluded. Okay? Uh, and then uh, you will all mostly find it uh, being used in medical fields and business communications. So now let's go to verbatim transcription. This is the commonly used one and uh, it captures both the verbal and nonverbal components of a discussion of your audio or video. Okay, so this means the filler, slang, stammers and all details omitted in intelligent transcription is retained. And um, so given the bulk of the information needed to be put in writing in verbatim transcription is heavier and verbatim tr is transcription is divided into to two full verbatim and clean verbatim okay so in this uh training we are going to focus on full verbatim and clean verbatim so uh verbatim transcription uh, uh literally you're going to find it uh in a police investigations court hearings uh, job interview <clears throat> it just really depends finally we have phonetic transcription but this one uh, you will have to train it uh, differently because it's a specialized form of transcription and it differs significantly from the other types of transcriptions I've mentioned above so uh, this one it aims to capture the way the speakers utter sounds with a particular focus on pronunciation of this of the words so this one uh, it requires a specialized notation system to be performed properly so for this one you'll, if you need to do phonetic transcription you will need to be uh, trained differently so having said that which type of transcription should you use once you meet uh, your work there so number one uh, the client uh, or even the transcription companies they usually specify the types of transcription they want you to use so let's say like verbatim transcription it's usually suited heavily detailed projects and uh, that require analysis of a complete transcript such as legal work 
edited transcription uh, because it creates a clean professional text that are both formal and comprehensive uh, you usually uh, you're going to meet them uh, in businesses uh, and then that texts that need publishing often uh, benefit from this type of transcript. Intelligent transcription delivers transcripts that are clear and easy to understand. As such, it suits a wide variety of general businesses purposes where documents need to be read quickly, digested, and shared. And then phonetic transcription explains how something was said on an extremely detailed level. So uh, certain industries gravitate towards this type of uh, transcription, uh, like academia, linguistic, medical, yeah. So in this course, we are going to focus on verbatim. And as I've told you, we have two types of verbatim, that is full verbatim and clean verbatim. So let's start with full, full verbatim. In full verbatim, the text is transcribed exactly as it sounds and includes all the utterances of the speakers. The speech errors, like uh, if a speaker makes a speech, uh, an error in uh, in between a speech, like I went to the bank on Thursday, then they repeat and say, no, Friday, you have to put everything as the speaker says. We have false starts, yeah? So if the speaker uh, makes a false start as they are uh, talking, like I, I wanted, I have dreamt of becoming a musician. So you also include it in full verbatim. Filler words like ah, uh, mm, kind of, sort of, you include it. Slang words, kinda, gota, gotcha, becha, wanadano, you include them in full verbatim. Starters or stammers. I, I went to, uh, Tuesday, yeah. Repetitions. I went, I went to the bank. You include the repetition in, in full verbatim. Okay. So, uh, and then what uh, in clean verbatim, what do you do? So for the speech errors, false starts, filler words, slang words, repetitions, you remove them. Yeah. But when it comes to repetitions in clean verbatim and you feel like this, the repetition you're hearing, uh, the speaker used it to uh, try to express emphasis like, no, 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 I am very, very happy. That one you include in clean verbatim, meaning that someone just didn't add. Uh, do the repetition on their own they were trying to express emphasis in filler words so words often excessively used by the speaker but when you take them out you are left with perfectly understandable sentences uh-huh you know like i mean so kind of uh so you remove them those filler words okay so we are going for the full verbatim and clean verbatim actually each company each transcribing company usually has a guideline for you to follow because they are different when it comes to go transcript transcribe me uh, rev scribe all these uh transcribing companies usually have different uh guidelines that they want you to use when you're doing full verbatim or clean verbatim but if you're going to do freelance transcription you are, you need to understand more about full verbatim and clean verbatim so you can just go and do more research on full verbatim and clean verbatim something else that you need to focus on when doing transcription is the use of double dashes and single dashes so in both full verbatim and clean verbatim uh, you might find yourself using double dashes like uh, for example in full verbatim when there is a change of thought that is there is a false start or a speech error or to mark an incomplete sentence uh, so in full verbatim when there is a speech error as i've told you uh, the speaker said i went to the bank on two thursday no friday so immediately after the speech error without putting a, a dash like here immediately after the speech error where he, the speaker has corrected himself and said because I, he started by saying i went on thursday and then no on friday that is where you put double dashes on your keyboard you can see the mark of dash so you just click one two and that is how you achieve double dashes okay there is a false start so uh like for example i want to say i wanted uh to go to the mall no i i want to run to the mall so immediately after the first false start, immediately after it, that is where you put your double dashes. 
for example here i uh, wanted and then the speaker changes and says i have dreamt of becoming a musician so immediately after they wanted the false start that is where you put the double dash okay and after the double dash you put a spacing and then continue with your sentence that is in full verbatim in clean verbatim how do you put double dashes so a uh, clean verbatim false start that adds to information because once you have a false start in clean verbatim that adds into information like sage is uh, and then another information adds there you are right uh, that boy is my son so immediately after sage is uh, the first false start you put double dash in clean verbatim uh, in case you also meet incomplete sentences, regardless of the verbatim type, whether it's clean or full verbatim, you'll have to put double dashes. Because in these uh, different audios or videos, you are going to meet a lot of incomplete sentences. The speaker was just speaking and then all of a sudden, they stopped speaking. So like, I wanted to say something but, and then that is an incomplete sentence. Whether it's clean verbatim, full verbatim, put the double dash immediately after the incomplete sentence without spacing okay yeah so when to use single dashes in uh, verbatim uh, so when the speech is interrupted in a conversation but the speaker continues his thought for example uh, speaker one wanted to say I thought he was gone but before he finishes I thought he was gone speaker two uh, interrupts the speaker yeah, so I thought he was, and then speaker two says, yeah, and then speaker one goes back and says, gone. So as long as he has finished his interrupted conversation, you use single dash. If it's an incomplete, like speaker one said, I thought he was, and then he was interrupted and never finished the statement, we use double dashes, as I've told you out there. Okay? So, also single dashes, we use single dashes in full verbatim because I've told you we, we write starters and repetitions, we write them in full verbatim. So, once you meet the stuttering words in full verbatim, you use single dashes. Like, why is this um, moist? MM, before the moist, you put single dashes. Full verbatim, too, why is this? Uh, why is this most? Because it's a repetition, you'll have to put a single dash immediately after the first repetition. Okay, you put a single dash and then spacing, you finish the sentence. But if it's clean verbatim, if you're cleaning this, why is this um, moist? You need to say, Why is this moist directly? Because you have cleaned the starter. If it's the repetition, you need to say, Why is this moist? without putting the repetition itself in clean verbatim. The other thing I want us to look at is quotation marks. So double quotation marks are used whenever there is a direct quotation in transcription. So you don't use the single quotation marks and um, internal dialogues are seen as direct quotations as well. For example, and then I thought to myself, what if I can't make it? Like if you find someone who has an internal dialogue to himself, we just use them as inter as uh, direct quotations and then you use double quotations. Okay, so when quoting, the first word is a, uh, of a complete sentence should be capitalized and then commas and periods should always go inside the quotation marks. We know that from English grammar, basically. Yeah, and do not use quotation marks in indirect quotations. Like for example, when the speaker paraphrases what has been said uh, the man said that he was in a hurry so not unless you hear a man uh, you hear like a direct quotation uh, the man said in quotes I am in a hurry but if the speaker has already paraphrased that you don't use the double quotations okay so uh, uh, I also want us to look at uh, speaker labels because sometimes you'll be meeting audios or videos where two or three speakers are, are, are talking. So, uh, if the speaker's name is mentioned at some point uh, or indicated in the title of the file, you use the speaker's uh, name. Okay? But if there is no name uh, mentioned, you use just the speaker's label. So, always use a speaker labels even if there is only one speaker. So, for example, there are interviews, uh, people are just chatting, as long as you hear one or uh, two or more uh, speakers talking. 
So make uh, each speaker's role in the audio as descriptive as possible. So if it's an interview, don't just say uh, speaker one, speaker two. Call it as an interviewer, interviewee, or a participant, or a host, or a facilitator. Let's say it's a podcast. You use the word host, facilitator, caller, receiver, and, and more. So, for example, if the speaker's full name are indicated at some point, like for example, Hillary Clinton, uh, later on in the transcription, the last name can be dropped and just use the word Hillary instead of uh, adding the Hillary Clinton. So, um, and always do your best to separate the different speakers. Uh, if you cannot identify who exactly is speaking, add a quotation, a question mark before the speaker label. Now, uh, I want to say this about speaker labeling as i've told you in this transcription all these things are just things you need to know that you need to uh, expect them in transcription but when it comes to different uh, accounts different companies they will give you different speaker label identifications so you also need to learn or read about different uh, guidelines when it comes to the uh, transcription companies so another thing speaker labels must be written in bold yes that applies to whether it's clean full verbatim and then followed by a colon and a space never use the tab button only click once on the space button so like for example this is how it's supposed to look like like mark full colon and then one spacing and then you continue with your with your transcript if it's speaker one full colon spacing and then you continue with your with your text so in case there is a change of speaker you have two speakers three speakers each speaker must always start in a different line like speaker one should be in a different line as uh, from speaker two like it cannot happen to be on the same line like this so each speaker should have a different line okay something else i also want you to learn about is time stamping uh they are usually time stamping in a transcription and time stamping is usually used by uh let's say the client wants to know uh they just want to know something like for example they want to know every time a speaker changes put a timestamp so that they can like have a flow and get to know when a speaker changes or they can tell you anytime there is a speech tag use a timestamp so we are going to look at tags and all the other things later, but for today, I just wanted to introduce you to this. So for timestamping, the format should always be 000000, and it should always be in bold and uh, using the square brackets. So the first 00 is the hour, the second 00 is the minute, and the third 00 is the second. So if it's at the start of the sentence, it will be 00, uh, full colon 00, full colon zero zero but if the thumb stamp let's say happens at the fifth minute it will be zero 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 five zero zero so always consider the whole file when you are time stamping so you download the clips and get to see like uh from which time is this clip on so let's say this clip starts at uh, the 20th minute it should not start as a zero 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 but then it should start at zero zero twenty zero zero Okay, and then you should never use the normal uh, brackets. You should always use the square brackets in time stamping. So today I was just introducing you to some of this, but you are going to keep on looking uh, more into it. And uh, something else, if you want to get to understand uh, the transcription better, you just send me a message. I'm going to attach my uh, email in the trans in the description box so that I can send you these documents. You go and also continue reading on your own. Okay, because transcription is all about practicing and uh, getting to understand some of these small things. So I've come to the end of today's uh, lesson. So see you on the next lesson as we continue looking more into transcription and getting to uh, familiarize ourselves with transcription. Thank you so much, guys, and uh, may God bless you. See you in the next video. Bye.